the generative age. A podcast that explores the rapidly evolving world of generative AI and its impact on education. Guided by EdTech director, author, and Nightscape board member, Alana Winnick, we are joined by experts and practitioners in the field who are shaping this course of artificial intelligence in the classroom. Whether you're an educator, administrator, technology leader, or simply interested in the future of education, join us on this journey through the generative age, powered by Nightscape. Last week marks the one year anniversary of OpenAI's ChatGPT. AI is not new. Um, it's been around for years, but this was the first time it was accessible to the public. Since then, we've seen so many other tools pop up. This has been game changing in education, and this podcast will continue to explore that as it progresses. But I just wanted to wish a happy first birthday to AI for all of us. Welcome back for part two, where we interview Cottesmore School's headmaster, Tom Rogerson, where we'll dive deep into the journey from Abigail Bailey, the human looking AI chatbot, to Abby, the strategic leadership chatbot that has less human characteristics and why those decisions were made, as well as Cottesmore's journey through creating these global virtual conversations. Shall I just tell you about the AI principle uh, journey? Yeah, do you want... Let's let's go through that journey because I found you based on that article that I saw mm -hmm. about Abigail Belly. Yeah, yeah. And then I went back on before our interview to do a little bit of research and I realized there's no more Abigail Belly and I'll there is, there is, there is. I'll, I'll explain. It is the same and it's continued and it's the you know, it's one and the same. It's just a new iteration. So the story was um this is several parts of this story. One is the conversation, getting the conversation going, being so excited about the possibility that AI is going to um, save teachers time. There are several other things going on at the same time. Um, and one of them was um, the idea that you could have uh, bots that helped the faculties that did not replace the faculties from the very beginning. OK, yeah. so it came out, I think it was November uh, last year, and my nephew came to me and said, there's this thing that you can ask it to write stuff for you. And it was like, oh, God, okay, Max, he's insanely good at everything that's technical. And that's what he's going to do in life. And he's going to become, you know, he's he, he's going to be very, very successful in, in doing that. And I basically um, ignored him. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not interested. And he didn't call it AI at the time. However, I had been using uh, Wonder. Um, and Wonder is an image generating um, AI. And it was awesome. Uh, I'm an artist. I love painting. And it was just the most extraordinary experience being able to create these images through, you know, speaking into the, the box. Um, and so that was my, that was a very personal, selfish beginning. And I, I've been basically a, a user right from the start. Um, and, and from basically ignoring him a few days later, I looked into it. Um, and it was ChatGPT, and it was, you know, world-changing technology. I mean, you and I know AI has been around for decades. So I went to Florida for half term. United States. Oh, yeah. And we went to a Little League baseball. Is it Little League baseball? That's where there's little children? Little, like little, little dudes. It was a real experience. It's what you see in the movies, you know, yeah kids with their uniforms on they look like sort of mini real players and it's all <laughs> super cool and he was there anyway so i met this guy um who works for amazon and he told me all about the stuff that's that, that, that's been used the last 20 years i just thought what is what why 20 years what are you talking about 20 years or 10 years or whatever it was he was saying and this whole generative ai thing was going on in the background as well and i was thinking hang on that the, the industry's been using this for a long time and I suddenly had an epiphany. We need to start the conversation. We, we, we have to start this conversation, just like you and I are doing now. Right. We have to start. And this is a year later. Right. We have to start this conversation now. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to invite everybody to have a conversation at Cotsmore, which is my school. <laughs> and we're going to invite Sir Anthony Selden, who has written a book on AI. Uh, you should look him up. He's a cool, he's a cool cookie. Um, and a great thinker and a very, very intelligent man. And so he opened up the conference. We call the Cotsmore's Free AI Conference. 
And so he opened it up and we had loads of speakers, a guy from New York called Stefan Bauchard. We had Chris Goodall. We had, uh, who's a, a, a great practitioner in England. We had uh, Dan Fitzpatrick, who we've talked about earlier on. And uh, he, he was awesome. He beamed in. He actually came in person for the next one. And wow. so um, so then we had a, it was a really philosophical chat. Like it was, it was lots of, talking it was lots of philosophy and lots of theory and so that was amazing and it was generally considered to be the first of its kind and we had people beaming in from all the way around the world from canada and from Bahamas. it was virtual it was, oh, it was virtual. virtual it was in it was in person and live streamed it was very very well attended and very exciting and so you and i we've been sort of early adopters we've been adopting this thing we've been talking about it for a long time we've always got to be empathetic for people who just haven't really kind of don't really care you know that's the majority of people i think so you've got to have huge empathy in that, in that on that front so what we thought was yeah enough talking now we've done a lot of lovely philosophy a lot, a lot of lovely strategy uh, thoughts where are we going where's the world going with this okay fine now we need to do this thing and so what we thought was, um, well, there's enough time between May and September to for people not, you know, to have a think about the, the philosophy. And so we thought, right, we're going to do a doing festival, an AI doing festival. We call it the Cotsmoors Free AI Festival. And it was three solid days this time. Crazy amount of time just on, on AI. And we had, it was so inspiring. We had Anthony, Sir Anthony Seldon um, started up again. We had Darren Coxon doing a day of creating a school in 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 three hours. We we were like marketing plan, the philosophy of the school, the pictures of the school, the architecture, the whole thing. We we created on AI a, a school, and it was really amazing. Again, all of this is 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 adult facing. None of this is child facing. Right. Um. And then we had the next day. We had um, the Tuesday was Melissa McBride and Phil Birchinal. And uh, Nick Jackson, um, Dr. Nick Jackson, beaming in from Australia. And we had something called the Future Foundation, uh, who's uh, Matthew Adshead, and uh, some amazing people that he he brought on as well. So how did you find these people? And that was Just... virtual, that was, uh, virtual reality. I'll tell you, AI and immersive technology, not virtual reality. Phil doesn't like calling it uh, virtual reality mm -hmm. because he doesn't think it's it's the best iteration of immersive. And the next day was um, uh, an incredible day. It was AI in the classroom. Dan Fitzpatrick, he was awesome. Um, we had uh, a guy, Matthew Weems, who did the AI and the basics. And that's for anybody who doesn't know what that, what's going on. And they're ah, I've only really got six minutes to learn. Watch that. It's so awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. And we had Dr. Phil Hardman. Do you know Philippa Hardman? She's an academic in England uh, and she's brilliant. And, and she spoke as well and something called the Sutton Trust and... The whole thing was extraordinary. So the, the, there is one answer, one answer to your question. How do I know these people? And one or two of them I know through being around for a bit, but the majority of them are, are through, is one simple answer is LinkedIn. And just going, wow, these people are just, there's so much thought going on here. And there's so much excitement and so much uh, conversation going on here. It's too, it's too vibrant. Weirdly, some of my... Um, best colleague friends now are people I met in lock in the lockdowns do you call, did you call them lockdowns in America yeah yeah we called it the lockdown or we just say the pandemic it was kind of a lonely experience mm -hmm. for everybody a bit bit weird and so I made loads of connections tons mm -hmm. tons of connections yeah. I did want to touch on the fact that I think what you and I are doing is very similar where we're trying to find these people and trying to have these conversations yeah. and it's not selfishly for ourselves. We're trying to spread this knowledge, right? So I'm That's doing it. that in a way with my podcast. And I think you're doing that in a way with your conferences. I had never known about your conferences and I Again. thought that they were only in real life. I didn't know that they were virtual as well. So I think that's a really great resource for everyone that's listening to now know about yours. So do you have any upcoming sessions yeah. and how often yeah, do you, yeah, yeah. are you going mean, to I This is the group called Cotsmore's Free AI Events, AI Conversations, Online, In-Person Video Content. Okay. And that's uh, that, that's that's happening there. And this is the, this is the brand. I love this it. I saw, I checked it, it out. AI Plus. And so yeah. well, we've only done one so far and it's AI and the Basics. And here he is, Matthew Weems. He's super, super kind, 
teacher. He's really, really living it. And I, I, I relate to him so much because as I think you were saying before that um, some AI experts, um, you know, that they, they can imagine what the classroom's like, but they've never been in the classroom. Or so, they haven't been in a very long time and the world has yeah. definitely changed, right? Yeah, that's it. Within the AI plus, AI and, sorry, ampersand brand, we have AI and SEN. And this is the big one. This is on this is on Friday. We, you can come. Oh, wow. yeah. um, so this is the email address here. Office at CotsmoreSchool.com. It's exactly right. And it's a it's a webinar. So we've got a Zoom account and we can do webinars on the Zoom account. As long as everybody realizes that we are passionate about the conversation. We're not yeah. passionate about child, about student facing AI is not what we're passionate about. We're passionate about having a conversation about the AI in education. And mostly. how long do you think it will be until you do have student facing AI? Um it's it's when it's ready with GDPR and safeguarding and all that sort of stuff. But as soon as it gets uh, rubber stamped, as soon as it's cool on that front. So uh, if there was the... one right now today, you'd be all for it? Yep. If it was kite marked, if it was rubber stamped, that's the safeguarding, like the government, KCSIE, it's cool, keeping children safe in education, uh, all that. If the government went boom, uh, that's now safeguarding safe, but that's not enough. GDPR. Do you call it GDPR in the US? No. What is what do you? GDPR is data protection r- ruling. Oh. It basically came in uh, at about the same time as Zuckerberg was being um, put on trial. You know, and, yeah. and that was all happening. I think it was slightly before. But um, it's really, really important what you do with your own data. It's really, really important what people do with your data. Um, and that is usually important. And I think it needs to be rubber stamped before you start sort of chucking it around, you know, AI. Easy. Yeah, I just want to but, make sure that we we set the message clear because I didn't want people to think that you were against students using it. So uh, I'm not against I, I, it. I'm yeah. for I'm for the conversation because you can't just you know I think blindly adopting it is nearly as silly as um, blindly rejecting it. Yeah, I also I, just I, think, I think both that, both things you need to be careful both ways. You know, for sure, I think that our job as educators is to prepare students to be successful right and Mm. when they graduate into the real world and my favorite question is would you use it everyone says yes okay so if you would use it then we need to teach our students how to use it properly right yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and people are so against it but the reality is they're going to use it in their jobs it's a hundred percent guaranteed right just for full disclosure, we have used perplexity, and it's very well renowned as uh, you know, inverted goes as the safe uh, version. But um, that's with supervision. That's with you know, it's right. with high supervision. Yes. Um, and that's that's the point. We're not there yet, but the stage I want to get to. That's the most incredible um, school of thought. That's basically a sort of Montessori st- style of uh, 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 of education. That is children leading their own learning. They, they get to a place where they want to learn about something. They learn about it and they learn about it five times quick, more quickly because they've right. decided to get there. We're not ready for this at all yet because of safeguarding GDPR, data protection. But when we are ready for it, the applications for you know self-guided learning are extraordinary, especially when you get into virtual reality worlds, immersive worlds. Is it a good substitute for real life no it's a terrible substitute for real life it really is immersive technology is a, is a terrible substitute for real life for most people having said that people with special educational needs people who are non-verbal people who are having a terrible life because of their learning differences i think that th- there's a different story robotics have been known to help people with severe autism as well and so uh, who are we to stop somebody who's having a, a really unhappy existence who are we to stop you know them from finding joy it, 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 somehow i'm i'm skeptical i personally still think that the, the human connection is 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 the sacrosanct above all you know the most important thing the, the human connection human time human uh love uh, you know this is the key so uh, this is a really it, good but, segue, I think, into the conversation about Abigail Bailey. Oh, because yeah. let me, before you tell us the story 
of how Sorry, she's... I was just, by the way, so can I just say, oh. the problem is there are so many ways of sharing stuff on LinkedIn. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I posted some stuff on the government. They put out a really, really good, really sensible and really good policy on AI. You should read that. If, I if you, definitely you, will. That yeah. was one of the topics I want to talk a bit about because I think that your government is a bit further ahead than our government in this. this Hang on, you, um, you say that. Joe Biden sa- um, signed a... Um, that's this week or last he week signed now. an executive order. I'm not yeah. sure, a little bit before this week, but yeah, he signed an executive I, order. So, you know, yeah, I put that, that far I put. I put that up there. So um, mm. we maybe we could just jump into it because we're mm. here. But yeah, Joe Biden signed an executive order. And then our vice president actually visited you in the UK at your global summit of AI safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they announced this series of new US initiatives to advance the safe and responsible use of AI. So mm-hmm. two of them, I mean, there's a bunch of initiatives, but the two I put for the listeners is the draft policy guidance on U.S. government use of AI. And the reason I put that in, because it does include and protect education because we are government employees. So I just put that in there. But then I think the bigger one is the United States AI Safety Institute, which lives inside the NIST framework. So if you are a director of technology, you probably are familiar with the NIST framework. It's a risk Mm -hmm. management framework. So this Mm -hmm. AI safety lives within that. And it helps create guidelines, tools, benchmarks, and best practices for evaluating the AI risk. And you had brought that up. And I think the important thing to notice here is that your government is much further ahead than our government. I think everybody else, everybody thinks everybody else is ahead. And I think it doesn't matter. I think, I think because this is all public documentation, I think you can, this whole democratizing thing, that's where this sits. You know, we can we can right. help each other for sure, and we should, right? We're I mean, we all have the same goals, um, yeah. so we should help each other. Uh, but I think you guys are a bit further ahead with your um, student data privacy laws because yeah. there are some federal laws, but we have a lot of state laws in New York State, where I live. Uh, we have much stricter laws than many other states, mm-hmm. and we either need to, if the state level has a contract, we can pop onto their data protection agreement, a DPA. Otherwise, we need to get a signed DPA for each vendor every single year, promising to keep data safe. This is a district to district responsibility, where I think that you're a little bit farther ahead, where you were saying you're waiting for that rubber stamp. Someone else is doing that for you. And I think that's a little bit more helpful than us here who yeah. are so, so analyzing this, um, each thing by yourself. There's this thing where quite a lot of money has just been given to, I, th- I, I can't remember, it's Oak something, Oak National or something, school. And quite a lot of money has been given them for development. So that's happening. You know, that 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 is literally happening now. So that's good. Wait, so let's go back to Abigail Bailey. So can you talk yeah. me through the story of how you started with Abigail Bailey and where you are now? Yeah. But before so, you do that, yeah. This was not intended for you. So I don't want you to think that it's targeted at you. Um, but I told you, I asked the last guest to leave a prompt for the next guest. Yeah. And we just scheduled this. So you were not supposed to be my next guest, but it is the coincidence that now you are the next guest. And it is sort of related to that because Abigail Bailey looks like a person, right? Mm-hmm. It looks like a she. So Vicky Davis, cool cat te- teacher, Vicky Davis is again, not directed to you, but she, this is a prompt she used and I thought it was very fitting. So maybe as you're talking about Abigail Bailey, who looks like a human and evolving into where it is today, maybe you can answer this question first. What are your concerns about how people talk about AI and when they humanize or anthropomorphize AI? Do you consider this a danger and do you have guidelines on how people should talk about AI tools in a way that is super clear that it's a tool and not a human? Or do you think that's not a problem? Who's that question for? She wasn't leaving this question for you because oh you weren't my word. scheduled. That's so, that's so interesting. So interesting. I, I know. So I thought it was interesting. You know that we just scheduled this three days ago i recorded with her i know 
So I thought it was very fitting. Okay. So, so shall I shall I talk? Shall I talk 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 about that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So it just seemed like a super obvious solution to create a, a something that would help uh, all leaders. And literally anybody can access this this strategic leadership bot. I thought this was uh you know a, a great for a public benefit it was great to help all leaders structure their thoughts have a a joint head it's really busy it's really crazy um being a being a head teacher there's so many it's quantum there's so many people so many people wanting lots of different things and all these different expectations sometimes you just need some clarity and this is what this was this is a joint head sort of idea so we what we did was we um uh created a, an image a picture we um we did say uh, he or uh, sorry we did say she gave it a pronoun gave it a title like a human humanish title and uh an animated rudimentarily really uh animated it after that for the next week i had the most incredible conversations with the most intelligent people and I was sort of coached. It was about anthropomorphization. It was about humanizing tech. And apparently this conversation has been going on for a very, very long time. And Siri is obviously got a human voice. You can choose, uh, you know, a male or a female. So that's a, that's good. You can choose, but it doesn't have a face. It doesn't have, right. I don't think it has pronouns. It doesn't have a title, a human title. I imagine that that's okay to the academic world because it hasn't got all of these you haven't, you know, haven't given it all these human traits. It's got one human trait, and that's a voice. So that's okay. One human trait. Yeah, that's we're just about okay with that. Alexa, exactly the same. So I've been given these sort of amazing lectures by these academic people, very, very clever people. And so we uh, gave it a second iteration. We decided to keep the name, and we decided to call it Abby. Mm. Um, so it'd be like Siri, Abby. Yeah. That sort of jazz so um and that, that as you can see there's a little avatar of a book uh with a mortarboard with the, a graduation hat on top of it and it says um strategic leadership for all and so that is where we that's that's where we ended up and it's a strategic leadership bot and the pronouns are, are sort of um you know it's, it's not so much about that anymore but it's still the public benefit is still there and it's still helping people to clarify their thoughts are not to replace this is just so not a replacement um and that's that that's that's where we are with it what was the piece of information that was given to you that made you change your mind essentially um it's the same thing as mannequins in the shop window you know is that normal or weird sometimes if they're a bit too human that can be quite weird I think that's what it is it's, it's that is it I, I think that they encourage me these academics that I've been speaking to for me to think in the, in the way that you know is it actually a person no um it, it, I, is it trying to be a person actually no because the animation was so rudimentary that it didn't it didn't sort of it wasn't obviously somebody trying to make it into a human but it was enough to make it uh you know weird or whatever i really really appreciated those conversations with the with the academics and i think they didn't say this but i think it's about authenticity as it's about what is it? And with the anthropomorphizing of technology, make it into a human. Have you seen those robots with rubber faces that right. make expressions? Yeah. People find that uh, quite tricky, which is why they leave the back plate off. They always have the oh, face. Have you noticed? Yeah. Have you noticed they have the face, the rubber face, mm -hmm. and they and they have the workings on show. Every almost every time, do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, we yeah, no, I know what you're on, talking about. You can look so you that up on the... Google right now. Yeah, and you can you see the working. Oh, that's definitely not a human. It's the authenticity piece. I think. I, I think, think that's what, it is. that's what that's my estimation. I love that, and also tr about transparency. And I think that you are very transparent. I will say that even when you had the human-looking Abigail Bailey, you were very mm. transparent that it was an AI. And I think that I will give you a lot of credit with that one because transparency and authenticity are both very important yeah and... it did it said it's literally said by the way for full disclosure yeah. uh, this is a bot you know this because... is this a, you yeah know, this because is i heard that there was a college that had an ai teaching assistant and they didn't tell the students and the students thought the teaching assistant was very helpful 
but they didn't know until later on that I was actually not a human. And I think that you need to be transparent. Some other questions I have about Abby is how was Abby trained? And do you have to pay per prompt? Like if I use it, are you getting charged every time someone uses it? No. And my third question is who supervises this chat or maybe someone doesn't. And if they do, how? Like, are you seeing what people are typing? So those are my big three questions about Abby and you can talk to them however you'd like. So Abby is a, a strategic leadership bot. So it's on publicly available strategic leadership papers that's that's what abby has been trained on who's done it um a, a company called interactive tutor and they that's what they, they did and they did it for the head of, head of ai bot um and also uh, a special educational needs um, bot as well they, publicly available um data and publicly available um training um papers so that's that's the answer to that. How how's it trained? Um, do you have to pay per prompt? Absolutely. Do you? I'd have to double check that with the with the uh, with the developer, um, but I think the answer is not. Because a lot of uh, companies they're using OpenAI, and I don't know what you're using as the back end of it. If they're going to use that technology, they need to pay per pass through, which is why something like Conmigo is going to not be free. Yeah, I defer. I defer to him, uh, but I know that it's not. That we don't pay for per prompt. Yeah, you don't. You don't get a large bill that you know of. <laughs> um, well, he might be. He might be. Um, but not. You're not paying it. He's not. He's not. He's not told me. Um, and then who supervises the chat? How do they? It's got. It's got to be um, the developer again. So. So, I'd, are you curious about how people are using it? Um, yeah, I am. It's been trained in such a way and it's been created in such a way that it's very, very ratcheted, as in it's very much, it, you know, if you ask it a question about the Russian Revolution, I think I'm right in saying it's going to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not too sure what you mean, but I can answer questions on strategic leadership. And so it's yeah. ratcheted right down to, uh, and we did that on purpose, that it has a very, very specific use. And I think, uh, you know, of course, that that that's good. To have a specific user your target is all educators every educator i just want to make sure because it says strategic leadership yeah so i didn't know so if it Abigail, was intended for a in leader some article, in fact in, in in some articles i'm not going to say which one but mm -hmm. it's getting a bit confused between the different ones so this strategic leadership uh bot abby for me is a specific leadership tool that's that's it. But and that's why a, I was it's asking. This kind of co-head, this joint head. If you're if you're talking about um, lesson planning or if you're talking about schemes of work, that's a different thing. That's a different piece of work that we're doing. Got it. And what is that? Okay. Uh, that is the work with Interactive Tutor, and mm -hmm. they have specific bots for specific things. So helping. You and those with... are not publicly available. Um, again, I'd say definitely you need to have a really awesome uh, podcast with Alex Faye of Interactive Tutor because he is very, very lucid and he's passionate and he works so hard and his whole team are working unbelievably hard to, you know, weird out this thing, which is going to help hopefully us all. We're, we're sort of riffing on each other. Um, yeah. because he, he's seeing what's possible and he's going, oh yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying, we want this, we want this, we want this. And it's what anybody would be saying. Well, um, no, I just want to explain to you, not everyone, that's why you're here, because there are a lot of schools that are not doing anything like this yet. They want to get their community to buy in. They're setting up policies and they're a little bit more restricted. And yeah. I think that someone like you and someone like me are, we're early adopters and yeah. we rolled this out a bit earlier. So I always say there's not one way to do it and there's not one right way to so do my, it. My massive piece of advice or what I would love to happen for any school trying to get into it is to have a conference, have a festival. I, we did it. We've been doing it and we got one on Friday. And I can't tell you how inspiring it is just to have the conversation. So for those districts that don't have enough money to maybe bring some people in, like you might have, what I did in my own district was 
you take your educators at any level, they could be a teacher, they could be a leader that is using it, has a more of an understanding. And what I did was I did lightning rounds and more of like a station rotation and the faculty rotated 10 minutes in each room and they got a personalized schedule and they just heard 10 minutes about how each person yeah. is using it in their professional role. And if yeah. you can't bring in experts like like you did, you can still leverage the people in the your thing, school and in your is, district. What I would say, I, I could not agree with you more. You know, what you've done is exactly, you know, it's it's a really deeply practical version of what we did. Um, yes, we had some absolutely insanely incredible people at our conference and our festival and our conference yeah. coming up. It's it's superb. And you say, um, oh, you know, all the money you need, but it's been it's everybody's so excited about this that actually right. it's not it's not necessarily would you do would you speak for free? Probably. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, boom. I've just would Matthew. Yes. So what I'm saying is it's not, it, it, it doesn't like right, but three. No, I get what you're saying. It's free and it doesn't, you don't have to spend loads of money to inspire everybody into action or into conversation. Or we could everybody. just join in on your great um, conferences that you're leading. Everyone could just hop on yours. That's what I've been trying to tell people seriously. Yeah. And it's not going to last forever. It's not sustainable financially to last it's forever. Not. Like in, Two years time, a year's time, these are not going to be free anymore. I'm not talking about Cosmo. We're, we're not going to, we're, we don't want to charge because we want to democratize the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I think at a wider level, this AI excitement and, and free stuff with AI, it's not sustainable. So I'd say now, now is the time to go yeah. for it. We're doing this um, free AI and SEN festival and it's it's going to be it's going to be really really exciting it's we've got a robotics as i said we've got a robotics firm to have a conversation with we've got um phil virtual we've got the you know immersive virtual reality thing going on and it's just going to be really explosive I've been doing this for an awfully long time the school leadership thing and i i think it's probably a sort of i don't know is it a midlife crisis i don't know but you <laughs> uh you you sort of suddenly just want to give something back and I, I yeah. feel like this could be a good thing to give back and if it's not then you know shut it down and move on with our lives or something but I feel like this is a, a really good thing to to share that's, no that's it is why we have the same mission that's why we're literally on this call right now so I could share your story right exactly. um so as a school leader from what I've heard about you you really have created a culture that embraces innovation so how did you do that and what advice do you have for other school leaders on how to create that same culture? I think the answer is a diff every school is in a, in, a, in a different part of its story, right? And I think it was just the right now is the right time for Cotsmore to leap into uh, uh, something very dynamic and leap into something very exciting, I I innovative and you know, potentially looking to lead the conversation on, on generative AI. I'd just say, just judge your right time because this could be your time or it could be just chill and, you know, you know, see, see what Alana's doing, see what mm -hmm. Tom's doing. It could be that it could be your time just to intelligently, what, you know, chill out, have a look, have a listen in, you know, get all the conversation input, and then make your own decision. So I think I think it's really you answer your question is you've got to know what you know when the right time is to uh, be dynamic within the story of your school. And and, and what, it, what happens is right now is a really dynamic time for Cotsmore, and we are I, able to do it. And because I I'd say also because I think we're very we're, we're a very traditional school. I feel confident in Cotsmore's ability to be what it is. What about someone who doesn't work in a school district like yours yeah. and their administration and leadership isn't as supportive and open-minded and innovative as you are? And they feel maybe isolated and alone and they want to have these conversations and they want to try these things. What advice would you give to that teacher? Really simple. Join LinkedIn. <laughs> Done. It's uh, I don't, you don't need to know anything else. Join LinkedIn. But who's to all the people? Just follow. Click, click, click. All the people that Alana says to follow, 
you know, <laughs> people who I'm following, um, you know, that's how I get my information. There's some seriously forward thinking people. And I just, um, you know, watch what's going on, like people's stuff, comment on people's stuff, join the conversation on LinkedIn, uh, because you'll find people like Jason, you'll fi fi find people like Matthew, you, yeah. you know, people like you. Yeah. And where else can you do that? That's amazing. Do they have yeah. internet in the places you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, I think so, after the pandemic, everyone has uh, a device and I would hope that everyone has a device what, and internet. What's what's um, not to get on with? It was it was funny because one of my questions for you at the end was where can we find you? But I think we could all safely assume that it's LinkedIn. I think we could just safely yeah. assume that. I mean, yeah. it could be not LinkedIn in a, you know in a year or a month or something, but it, yeah. right now it's LinkedIn, yeah. And I think the, the big resource is that if anyone's going to take away from this call that you have, I think is your LinkedIn page and the, um, the free... Um, what do we call them? The free from now on their conferences. So okay. it's called Cotsmore. Cotsmore's free AI, uh, AI and SEN conference. That's what the one on Friday. We're doing one in, by the way, January and February. That's Cotsmore's free AI and maths. So we're doing maths, and the reason why we're doing maths is because I really can't grasp in my own mind how maths works in ChatGPT or, or mm. in generative AI. So I'm yeah. like, come on, show me. Join all the free conferences that Cotsmore Absolutely. is offering. That's a cool. great one. And then another resource I found was you had this open source AI acceptable use agreement that school yeah. districts can customize. And I thought that was really awesome as well for yeah. someone who's looking for that documentation. That, that was a promise made at the first conference. So we thought, you know, it's nice to have a conversation, but, um, you know, what's going to come of this? And so one thing was to have this and the other one is to work on a scheme of work. And of course you are doing that beautifully. So you could, you, you could fit into that um, very much, but we definitely went out for the agreement. Tune in next time to listen to some of the episodes that I recorded live at Nicegate. I was fortunate to sit down with Microsoft Education's Chief Innovation Officer, Michael Jabor, also known as MJ, and the E-Twins who led our keynote speeches. I also did a 10-minute TEDx talk on the main stage opening up for MJ, no pressure. And I'm going to be creating an episode around how I used AI to help me with the entire process from writing to speaking to image generation. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning into this episode of The Generative Age, powered by Nicegate. For a deeper dive, check out my new book titled, How'd You Guess? The Generative Age, now available on Amazon. Our journey may pause here, but the conversation doesn't need to end. Stay connected and informed by following me on social media at Alana Winnick and subscribing to my newsletter, all conveniently accessible on my website, alanawinnick.com. Don't just listen, be a part of it. With your free NiceGate membership, you can join these live discussions, enroll in our free Generative Age NiceGate community, where you can share resources, ask questions, and collaborate with like-minded colleagues. If you enjoyed this podcast, consider leaving a review and telling a colleague or a friend. We've got so much more in store, so be sure to join us next time for another exciting conversation. Until then, keep learning and keep growing in the generative age.